Hey, hello friends. Welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about AWS Detailed Billing Report. Yeah, these are the files which get created into your S3 bucket, whichever S3 bucket you choose. And what Amazon does is that it periodically puts a detailed CSV file into your S3 bucket. And if you go ahead and open that CSV file, you will get to know about all the details related to your billing right so that's what we are going to concentrate on this in this particular video we'll go through that detailed file understand different fields which are there in that and we'll also see that how can you find out that where your money is going right so before we go ahead i request you that if you are new to our channel please go and subscribe to our channel as you can see we have a lot of AWS videos uh, which are practical in nature and easy to understand. You can go ahead and look at it. Uh, please read through the comments. You will get a lot of things. You will see that uh, those are answered in the comments as well. Okay, so uh, let us move uh, to, uh, to our account where I will show you that first of all, how can you go ahead and basically enable this detailed billing report? And then in addition to that, how can you go ahead and understand it, right? So if you, uh, once you are logged into your account, if you go here, you will have my billing dashboard. You can go to my billing dashboard and you will see different sections. You can go to cost explorer, okay? If you want, you can open cost explorer and in cost explorer, you would be able to see in a graphical manner uh, you know, you can enable it and then you can see in a graphical manner that how much money you are spending on different services every month, every day and things like that. But if you want to go to even finer details, right, uh, there is something which AWS gives you, which is the detailed billing report. So you can go to preferences on the left hand side. And then you will see this place. If you are, if yours is a new account, new AWS account, you might not have these things ticked. So you can go ahead and you know just tick all of these stuff, right? And in this, the last thing is, the last checkbox is receive billing report. So you can tick this thing or check this thing and then give a name of one of your S3 buckets. So I have a bucket called WH internal. I have just put that bucket name and then I said verify. It verifies that yes, that particular bucket is there. In addition to that, you will also have to put a bucket policy into your bucket. How do you get that bucket policy? Once you have put your bucket name and you have verified, you can just click on the sample policy and you will get uh, this bucket policy, S3 bucket policy from Amazon generated for you. Just copy paste, copy this whole thing and you can go to your, um, your, your bucket and you can go ahead and paste this particular bucket policy. In case you are not aware what S3 bucket policy is, I have a video which you can go ahead and look at. How do you find it? Go to our channel, go to videos, just search for S3 bucket policy and you will find it here, okay? It is available there so you can understand for what purpose S3 bucket policy gets used, okay? So once you have set up your bucket, what happens is uh, Amazon continuously at regular intervals keeps putting these, uh, these files which contains all your billing details into this particular bucket. Now there are four different types of files as you can see here, right? And the way they differ is in terms of their granularity. As you can see, there are two files which give you all the expenses at monthly level. And then there are two files which give you at hourly level, which means how many ever resources you are running in your account for all those resources, right? For all those resources, every hour there will be uh, there will be an entry in that particular CSV file. I'm going to show you the CSV file and explain you as well. So just be with me for, for some more time, right? Now, uh, so is, if you see these two, the hourly ones, what's the difference? Detailed billing report, detailed billing report with resources and tags, okay? So this one has got, has got extra columns, which means if this one is the most detailed report which you will have, and if you go and read the documentation, it will talk that these hourly reports can go very, very big in size. Uh, suppose, uh, you know, your account is getting used for prod purpose or, or it is getting used, uh, you know, in a proper manner, then your billing reports can go really, really big. Okay, so uh, what Amazon also does is that while putting these files onto your S3 bucket, it zips 
the file so that it so that it consumes lesser space of course on your s3 bucket right so um, a minute on this with resources and tags what does it mean it means in your csv file for every entry for every r the record entry which will be there you will also have a column which tells that what is the resource id because of which this entry is happening for example you have an ec2 instance running so what is that instance id that you will be able to see in one of the columns in the same way and tags what are, which are these tags these are cost allocation tags i have talked to you in my earlier videos many of the times about cost allocation tags right so you can go you can go here to your cost allocation tags right let i've just opened it so you can convert any of the any of the used tags i'm sorry just a minute yeah so you can go and convert any of your used tags uh, to uh, to a cost allocation tag which is just a special tag what happens is the, the that tag starts coming as an additional column into your detailed uh, detailed billing report right so for example for example within a particular region in north virginia you have got let's say 50 instances running out of that 50 20 are dev 20 are test and let's say 20 are prod let's make it 60 okay so to 60 instances three different environments so what you can do is whenever you are launching the instances you can attach or you can apply a tag called environment and you can give value as dev for 20 instances value as test for 20 instances and value as prod for other 20 instances right so you've got 20 dev 20 test and 20 prod great now what happens is in this detailed billing report right for the for the all the instances which are there in dev environment in the column there will be a column called user colon env right because environment is what you have created let's say environment if it is for example if you have created the uh, tag called environment there will be an additional column called user colon environment and you will have value dev so you can basically filter it and do all of that so let, let me show you that uh, uh, in detail how to do it so coming back so i have already set this up in my bucket wh internal let me go to that particular bucket here is my bucket wh internal and as you can see i have got lot of this detailed billing files wow so many and as i had told you there are four different types so you will see four different types of files here for every month right 2018 5 2018 6 there is one aws billing csv then you have aws billing detailed line items uh, aispl because my account is associated to indian entity of aws and uh, then you have this this you know even even bigger one let me reduce this a bit so as you can see detailed line items with resources and tracks this is the one which is the most detailed and then the other one more type aws cost allocation aispl so basically all four types you have I am going to show you the most detailed one so that way you will get to know the maximum amount of details okay so let me let me go back I have already downloaded and opened this particular CSV file the detailed one let me show you that so here is a file which which you can see uh, this is I think last or last to last month of this particular account and uh, within this if i will go ahead and show you so there, there are a lot of columns of course if you go to the, right from the left hand side you have pair account linked account if in case there is a consolidation you are doing such things uh, record type line item there are a few other additional record items which will be there like rounding and subtotal which will come at the end of the file so you don't worry much about it the important ones uh, the important columns which are there i'm going to talk to you about those so uh, let's see this one product name first of all because of what reason this particular uh, expense has happened so it has happened on s3 so amazon simple storage service uh, you have a rate id you have a subscription id let me tell you what are these though these are for internal purposes but but see uh, the the way aws billing happens at their back end of course they have different plans defined for different type of operations right so if you see let me show you something um, there are two types of subscriptions if you see oh no not here okay I'll, I'll i'll show you within s3 there is i'm i'm seeing only one uh, so it is only one type i'll show you just in a while in with ec2 and you will understand that so as you move forward you will see that of course in case of s3 there is no matter of availability zone when we look at ec2 we will see some entries related to availability zone as well no matter of reserved instances being applied so nothing you will be able to see that because of what reason this particular cost 
has been incurred, right? So the, or this particular expense happened. So if you see usage type requests tier one, tier two. So if you go ahead and uh, and look at the pricing of S3 in detail, I have explained it in my video as well. That if, in case of S3, there are different reasons because of which because of which uh, the cost would be incurred. Of course, there is storage. How much amount of storage are you? How much amount of data are you storing? There is um, how much amount of data out is happening from S3? Also, how much uh, API calls or basically actions are happening or requests are happening on S3, right? So uh, within that request also, AWS has defined different tiers. So for example, uh, you are charged $0.005 per thousand requests. Uh, this is like in the start, in, for, for the starting thousand requests. If you are using more, then for the next 10,000, 10, 10, uh, you know, uh, you are you are being charged only 0 0.004 per 10,000, and of course there are limits to this. You can go ahead and see that up to how many requests tier one is applied, up to how many requests tier two is applied. All that is given on S3 pricing page. You can refer that. But the the, the good the good thing is is to um, is, is to understand that uh, you know for for different for you know for all the different uh, type of activities you can come here and see that what action happened and because of that how much is the cost you can go ahead and see what is the usage start date end date and you'll be able to see rate and total cost and which particular resource has costed that amount so there are different buckets which i have and whichever bucket has costed that particular thing we are able to see now let me show you a more detailed one something where i have ec2 available and with because we know ec2 is such a big service if you go come here and see um, uh, you know a lot of data transfer costs all the volumes uh, vpc related stuff whatever runs everything comes within you know, you know within uh, ec2 service or within ec2 product so i have also uh, pulled up a file where i can show you the details related to ec2 you will be able to understand a lot more here so please hold on tight so let us see. I have filtered. I have filtered this thing for EC2 alone. I'm not. Uh, I've not checked other stuff. So within EC2, let's see. I was talking to you about two different subscriptions, right? So there are two different subscriptions. Let us understand what are these subscriptions for. Don't worry about the numbers, but understand why are they, right? So in case of an EC2, try to think that what all what all factors are there which cost you money. Of course, when EC2 instance is running, there is a compute cost right per hour cost will be there there is ebs volume related cost there is data transfer related cost and so on right i have talked about uh, pricing of ec2 in very much detail in other videos please go ahead and take a look at the channel if you have already not seen those videos those are really helpful will help you to understand why the bill comes as the way it comes right and different uh, pricing models as well so coming back let me try to show you so you are seeing the usage type so in usage type if you see box usage basically you are using you know ec2 instance so for t2 micro for the instance running whatever cost is there that particular thing is written in the same way you can see volume usage so you have a volume you have created an ebs volume because of that some cost is there that particular thing is written now let me filter it okay i'll go ahead and filter for a particular i'll remove this particular subscription so that only one is selected 251 you remember at last so 251 if now you go ahead and look at usage type these are all related to data transfer so what AWS has done, and you know, at the back end, they have a, they have they have created a grouping that okay for data transfer, you know, for all the for all the data transfer related things, they have created a subscription at the back end for all the uh, EC2 running, uh, EC2 instance running or volume things, they have a different subscription. You don't have to really know these codes and everything, but the important aspect I would say, the important aspect is this part you can go ahead and look at usage type so you can really understand that for what purpose because of what reason you are getting charged now see when i've created a t2 micro instance the operation was operation was run instances if, you, if those of you who have read run instances is basically launching an instance okay so you if you want you can you can refer api or command line as well so in which particular availability zone this instance was launched eu central 1c so that is written whether reserve instance uh, benefit was applied on it whether if i if i had a reservation of t2 micro type and in eu central 1c availability zone then here the value would have become y which means reserve instance benefit would have been applied and i will not have to pay any on demand money so but in this case i don't have any reserved instance and hence I am being charged 0 
for Linux T2 micro instance per hour. And let's move moving forward on a particular day from some time to some time. And understand here every record represents one hour. So you can see 1st November 2017 from 12 in the midnight to 1, which is one hour. It was used for one hour. The rate was 0 0.0134 and multiplied cost is 0 0.0134 for that particular R. What is the resource ID? Resource ID is also given. If you go ahead and move forward, you'll also be able to see the cost, the cost allocation tags. If I have applied, if I have converted ENV as cost allocation tag, I can see it as another column. Now here I'm not seeing any value, which means I would have not provided any value when I launched this particular instance. Okay, if I would have given a value like dev, for example, here I would see dev like this. And then if I want, I can just filter on this particular column and just say, let's say, select all the rows which have got value dev. And I can simply very easily just go to this particular column and just do a select, sorry, like from here, I can select to the bottom, for example, and I would know the sum, how much is the total cost which has been incurred because of dev environment. So easy, right? So for example, think, think of this scenario. You have, you have, as I was telling you, you have dev environment, test environment and prod. And you can you you go ahead and you have launched a different size of instances in all the three environments. All you have to do is just apply the tag properly, and then you can come to this particular detail billing file. Don't do any filter. Just go to go to this particular user uh, you know cost allocation tag. Filter it here. Select only the dev. Do a sum on the cost column, and you have that cost which your dev environment has incurred. Right, so easy for us. So as you can see, uh, that's what I was trying to explain you. Um, here you have different type of uh, operations. Uh, we talked about reserve instance being uh, applied, and and so on. Uh, you may ask that that why why is uh, why is there uh, no value in the availability zone in case of uh, EBS volume? Uh, well, though they they do provide. Uh, uh, they do provide just the just the region in this case because uh, most probably the the availability zone significance is there because when uh, is there when the reservation gets applied if you remember we have talked about earlier in our reservation video that when you are reserving ec2 instance you say that i am reserving in let's say north virginia region in availability zone a so only when you run an instance in availability zone a the reservation benefits would be applied but there is no such reservation thing in case of, um, in you know, in case of uh, EBS volume. It doesn't matter you run a volume in availability zone A, B, C, D, or what. Doesn't matter. You will have the same cost in a particular region. So probably that's why they do not populate the availability zone uh, value in this particular column. But in case, in case, let's say you do have a requirement that you want to know that uh, in every availability zone how much cost has been incurred. The solution is simple. Just go ahead and apply a cost allocation tag to your EBS volumes, and you can go ahead and update the value of their availability zone in that particular cost allocation tag. And simply here, one additional column will come, which will have the value of your availability zone. I hope you are able to follow, guys. In case you find it really fast, just slow down the speed uh, in the in the YouTube uh, playing section. You have an option to slow down the speed. Okay, in case. Um, in case you feel it's okay, please put, uh, you know, click on the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. We have a lot more videos coming uh, very soon and I hope to give you knowledge uh, in a proper manner uh, to the finest depth. That's what I try. Please, uh, please do join our LinkedIn group. Uh, the, or you'll find all the relevant links in the description below. With that, uh, I'll end this video. Please show your love, share with your friends. Bye-bye, take care. You are watching this video on Knowledge India. We request you to subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can get updates regarding all our upcoming videos. You can also go ahead and look at our playlists where you can find different videos related to certifications. If you have any query or request, go ahead and post it at the community tab. Thanks for watching. See you.